possession crucial from this. How much longer will the referee allow? Dublin lead by a point. And there's the whistle. It's over. It's over. We earned it by winning the last two matches on the road, and that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurland, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. Right. It's over the bar. Hello, welcome to the RTE GA podcast. Mikey Stafford, Roy O'Neill here to preview the Allianz Football League finals this weekend. And we've been joined by Niall McCoy of Armagh and Peter Canavan of Tyrone. How are you doing, gents? Mikey, how are you? Hello, Mikey. Good, thank you. Um, League final weekend, Peter, I, I, I looked up Wikipedia to uh, see how many how many league Allianz League medals you had. Um, I have to. I'm sorry, I don't know your career off. I have to do this with some contributors, though. I have to remind Jackie Tyrrell how many leagues he's won and stuff like that. Um, you've won he, two, by he, the way. He does. Jackie doesn't. Jackie doesn't even know. <laughs> no, yeah, no, I didn't genuinely had to tell him at least more more than once. So, Peter, you've won like, two, 2002, on like, 2003. Unlike Jackie, I do. I I remember them well because we only won two, and they were the first. 2002 actually was the first mm-hmm. national title that. That we won, that throne won. So for us, it was, it was a big thing at the time, just to make that breakthrough. And yeah. obviously, whilst we had different management in two thousand and three, with Mickey coming in, we won the league again and uh, went on to win the championship. So yeah, it it was a big help to us. Unfortunately, we haven't won it since, uh, which shows that how how difficult the league is to to win to begin with. Yeah. But, Did you um, play in the ninety one final? Uh. I, I did against Derry. Yes. I I certainly did. I was corner forward. She um, must have been young then, Peter, were you? I was in uh, I was nineteen or twenty mm. at that stage. Um we actually played Derry off the park in in the National League final in Croke Park. Um brilliant performance and they got a goal on and a point at the very end. Anthony Tuchel got a, a, a goal direct from a forty five. So Derry stole it and it was two weeks later we played them in the first round of the championship and it was knockout then at that stage and they blew us away. They were by far the better team in the in the championship. So um Derry were our bogey team back in the early nineties, that's for sure. You, you yeah. might want to know, Peter, we'd have forty fives on YouTube if you ever wanna <laughs> I know. I know I'd be reminded about it enough, uh, Niall, thanks. <laughs> so it's fair to say then that, you know, the uh, league, you know, it's um, be, even before it was coupled to the championship, it does it does have an impact, Peter, and it does kind of it can be a great springboard for a team, especially a team who maybe haven't won a national title before, or yes. or it's you know, or in a long time, you know. But back then, Mikey, we we didn't get to play in Crow Park too often either, and for teams that don't, teams maybe do more. Well, you won your first in Clonus. <laughs> yeah, um, I think Crow Park was being done up. Was, was that the yeah, reason? Yeah, would have been um, around then. Yeah. But it, it was actually a disappointment that we didn't win it because that's there's only one place to win an all Ireland title of any description, and that should be in Crook Park. So, uh, but we made amends uh, the following year. But it has been diluted somewhat, and and that with with championship coming up. So so you know, and, and this year, for example, it's uh, one week mm. uh, breather. So it's it's difficult but look it's still a national title and it should still mean something to players and, and to counties yeah well Tyrone's two put them one behind New York and uh <laughs> randomly and a couple behind Galway who only have four well Mayo have 12 so um there's quite there's quite a drop Kerry of 23 titles Dublin 14 Mayo 12 Cork 8 mean 7 I've been on Wikipedia this afternoon lads one thing I spot actually Peter before we actually get on to the matches on your Wikipedia page um yeah, it has down as one of your nicknames, Petrol Pete. Does that one you, ring a bell with you? Are you sure you're on the right, on the right page there, Mikey? Yeah, yeah, Peter the Great is there. It doesn't mention God, I'll be honest with you. It says Peter the Great and Petrol Pete. That was a new well, one on me. You're the first man that I've heard calling me that. I've been called plenty of things, but that's that's a first. <laughs> All right. You may, you may log on to Wikipedia there and um, amend your entry, I think. <laughs> okay. We'll get on. We'll start with Division One, lads. Obviously, which is the uh, the showpiece final on on Sunday in Crow Park, at four o'clock. Mayo Galway being preceded by Derry in Dublin. Dublin get to be the 
curtain raisers for a change and quote are back. they going to tug off in the queues extend that's, this is all you I, care that's about. the big that's the big question for me <laughs> so, here's the only question this is about the third or fourth week in a row you brought it up you're obsessed um with answers we'll, we'll get them on sunday or um niall um i guess we'll start with that like the elephant in the room for mayo they never want to lose a game of football to galway they wouldn't want to lose a game of tiddlywinks to galway and they have Ross Common coming the week after. It's interesting to see. I see them going hell for leather with this. And if anything, the 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 Connacht Championship match against Ross Common may take a slight back seat with them. I don't know. What's your thinking on it? Yeah, yeah. I, <clears throat> I think they could have all the intentions of maybe not going full pelt, but it's Mayo. And once you get into the crew park surroundings and you mentioned their goal, yeah, it might take on a a life of its own. Um, I asked one of my stupidest questions ever this morning. I was interviewing Robert Finnerty and I was like, I know if there hadn't have been Mayo would have lifted the title and I know you're playing in a league final, but do you think league finals are a good idea? And he said, yes, of course he said yes. But I, I still just don't like them. I don't mm. like them in the top couple of divisions. Peter talked about Tyrone Springboard. I remember 94 Armagh getting to a league semi-final against Leash and it being a great occasion. Then Conor Orp is trying them, but I just don't like Division 1, Division 2 finals. I don't think the teams particularly like them. I don't think that's much of a, a secret now. Um, so it's just it's very hard to judge, Mikey. It could turn out to be a classic. It could turn out to be an absolute stinker. It's uh, at The fact that it's Galway and Mayo, and as I say, Mayo are involved, would make me be optimistic that we'll have a, an entertaining fair without maybe full throttle. I don't, I don't expect to see a load of suspensions coming out of it, put it like that. Yeah. Suspensions would be silly, but Rory, it's, it's very hard to see either team applying the handbrake at all here. Pork Joyce, even after the last league game, last regular league game, saying, we'll be in Crow Park at four o'clock on Sunday, as in, we're not moving this game for Mayo. We're not going to help Mayo out. Like, you know, he was adding a little bit of needle there. Might have been a little bit in jest, but it's like, I just can't see this being played as some kind of uh, 70 or 80% game. I can't see it. Not with Galway Mayo, given the traditions, the rivalries, and obviously the two farm teams in the country and potentially two of the big favourites for bigger honours later in the year. Regardless of what happens in Connacht. Exactly. I think it, I just think that it, they won't be able to help themselves. Um, I do. I think Niall makes a very good point in relation to the style or the calibre of game that we might end up seeing. And I suppose it goes back to league finals that we've seen of the recent vintage where there's a fizzy pop nature to them they tend to be you have a score i'll have a score and let's go up and down the field and you know like it's it's very oh after you sir i don't necessarily see them you know belting seven shades of lard out of each other that won't happen that w it won't have that championship fervor but i i'd expect a pretty open and a pretty good contest and i think the two teams will go for it within those sort of parameters uh, and that's why I suppose to a certain extent as well I would and like I, me and Niall have had Niall and I have had these this discussion before I would take a slightly different view in relation to league finals I do think that they offer a, a lovely little colorful end to what used to be the spring campaign and almost bookmarked the beginning of championship and it gave everybody at sort of two to three and sometimes four week respite to go away and then everybody ramped it up again I think they've been tarnished somewhat by the proximity to championship and that to me is a little bit of a shame but look this is the crazy calendar that we've subjected ourselves to so I think I I think if you look across the board the opportunity for Cavan Cavan are going into play is it their fourth champion? There's their fourth time in Croke Park over the last 12 months. How often do Fermanagh get to Croke Park? How often will Wicklow get there? Uh, Sligo, obviously, uh, an excellent Talchon Cup campaign last year, played two matches in Croke Park, have another opportunity now for a developing team to go and play in Croke Park again. So I wouldn't underestimate that, along with all of the financial aspects, which I think are key. And the one thing I would add on terms of the league finals, I mean, people are looking to dispense with, I saw Kieran McKeever saying the Ulster Championship needs to go. Now we're into a situation where the preseason competitions need to go. The Ulster Championship needs to go. League finals needs to go. So why don't we just cancel inter-county GAA action, all put on Aaron sweaters and head <laughs> off and dance the siege, the siege of Venice at the crossroads. I mean, and go back to our clubs and we'll be all happy out like Dev would have wanted. I mean, it is getting into silly territory with the amount of stuff we're looking to try and bin here. And I understand that, you know, 
it's, it's very, very unfair on some teams with the calendar fixtures that they have. But I do think there's plenty across the weekend for all foot lovers of Gaelic football to get something from in all four divisions. And there'll be, I think three of the four matches are difficult to call. Yeah, I'd agree on that. And and on on that first division match, division one game, Peter, I like it's easy to characterize this as kind of, you know, fire and ice kind of mayo or still bring in their kind of patented mania to games to an extent, attacking like with gusto, kicking the ball, heaven forbid, into their full forward line. Um, you still def- you know, defending like they're demented, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Whereas Galway seem to be kind of you know, really developing the style they have under Porrick Joyce, which is to look at the opponent, you know, kind of try and figure them out and try and see how best to, you know, kind of defang them. And then when they get a lead, as they showed against Kerry at the weekend, they're very, very good at, as the best Dublin team were, at completely taking the air out of the competition and killing time and managing the game. So there's a nice clash of styles here, it would seem. Well, even if you, if you look at the facts alone, Mikey, I think Galway have conceded only 81 points in their seven mm-hmm. games, whereas uh, I think that's the lowest of all the teams in Division 1, and Mayo have 126, probably the highest. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that backs up your point. Maybe the best uh, team going forward is going to be playing the best defensive setup. In the very first game that they played, Mayo and Galway, we we covered it. It was a brilliant game. At times it was tight. At times there was open football in it. Um, but that it, it was extremely competitive. But I thought that day that that uh, Mayo were uh, for a team that was just out. We weren't very certain of their style of play. They had no Shea in, but they weren't kicking a lot of ball into them. Galway were able to vary their their tactics much more that day. But they still didn't beat Mayo. And in the rest of the games, despite their injuries, I've been most impressed with Galway in terms of their game management. They're now a streetwise team, which they definitely weren't two or three years ago when, when Parik Joyce came in and he thought he, he had the firepower just to go at anybody and play a more open brand. He has quickly sussed that out. And I really like the way they're, they're shutting that position down. And when they get everybody back on the pitch, they're going to be a serious animal moving forward. Likewise, we know that the, the serious progress that, that Mayo have made and, and they have uh, changed their style of play. But back to the point that Rory made about, you know, the two teams going for it. Martin Brett and I had a brilliant piece in the paper during the week about the National League and all Ireland finals that these teams have played in. And Galway in the last 13 finals, be it National League or uh, all Ireland finals, they've only won three. And Mayo haven't fared a pile better in the last 20. They've only won two. Under but Joyce as well, Peter. Under Joyce as well, Peter. They've, lo- they've lost their last three finals in Croke Park, which was the Connacht final against Mayo um, in that first year out of COVID. Last year's Division Two final and obviously the All-Ireland final. So I think Gal- Galway are going to be right up for it, I think. Well, for that reason alone, I think the two teams will the be The two up teams, for it. yeah. Rory, they're yeah. not in a position to be... Uh, Sniffy. Sniffing at, yeah. at National yeah. League titles, yeah. and especially in Croke Park. So, And there's no love lost between the, the two mm. sides. So, yeah, definitely. Very un- unfair. I think that Mayo have a week's turnaround. There's no yeah. doubt about that. But look, there's nothing they can do about that now. If Armagh or Donegal had the choice, I'm sure they'd rather be in Mayo's shoes now. So... Um, I think the two teams will go at it and I, I think we're in for a good final. Yeah. Um, how do you see it panning out now? Do you see a kind of a almost a rope a dope from from Galway? Are they gonna try and they're gonna try and lull Gal- uh, Mayo in and then kind of spring out, you know, kind of almost a, a, a counter attacking soccer style, or are they gonna be more likely to try and go toe to toe with Mayo and try and, you know, mirror them, which is seems to be how they, they do like to try and as with Derry last year, they do try to kind of kind of mimic the team they're playing against almost to, and go again go up against them. Yeah, um, they do. But I think over the last couple of weeks, we saw this more. <clears throat> excuse me, uh, how ingrained they've become in their own style, and I suppose more confident in that style of play they're 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 playing. And I suppose the penultimate match against Armagh, we really saw that uh, come to the fore where they were just so uh, the adjective. Might might vary on who you're who you're asking, like, but I I would say it was disciplined. It was disciplined, and it was just uh, 
you know, most people probably miss it because they're watching the rugby, like, but just watching them sit back and let Armagh play the ball for two or three minutes spell. Just and... to say, I had the best of both worlds here. I was in work with Niall, and Niall was doing the live blog on the Armagh Galway match with headphones on, and the rest of us in the office were watching the Grand Slam match, and Niall was shouting at the completely wrong moments. It was <laughs> it was very entertaining. An Armagh fan watching Armagh being beaten by Galway while everybody yeah. else was watching the game of rugby. Well, well, a team goes 26 minutes without scoring and doesn't usually win a match, but that's, that's modern football now. I, I, I still think, that, listen, I, I totally get, and Rory's right there, there is a sort of, that you before me sort of feel the league finals where both teams feel they can have a go, but I still think Port Joyce is going to be looking at this as preparation for championship and being a real, a real, uh, a real chance to get to once again execute their game plan and see how... Mm fine tune it for, for going into Connacht and, and the all Ireland series down the line. And again, Peter's right as well. These teams can't be sniffy, um, but it's it's worked for them. It's got them to a, to a league final, so why change it? I, I I think we'll see Mayo having an awful lion share of possession, Galway sitting and hitting on the counter what they have been doing. I, I don't see them mimicking Mayo this weekend, to be honest with you. I see they probably have they're in year two of that extreme sort of structure they played that they tended to play most of the time last year. They generally do play now and I expect to be more the same. I see no reason why they did change it. You know, I don't, I think they're confident enough now where they don't have to mimic um, mm. confident in their own system, what it can do, how strong they're in it. And uh, it's funny in the league, like they are down a half time in that Arma match that they had lost. They're probably going in that carry match at relegation uh, on their mind. Yeah. Now they're in the league final. So, it just shows at this high end, it's 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 fine margins, like it really is. But mm-hmm. to answer your question, no, I don't I don't think so, Mikey. I think we'll see Galway play Galway football, what they have been playing particularly this last couple of years. Mm. Rory, you're a great man for admiring the spine of a team and you look at the Galway one. Yep. Yeah, so that's to admire Sean. Oh, <laughs> Sean yeah. Kelly, John Daly, Paul Conroy, Matthew Tierney, Shane Walsh, and you know, throw in Rob Finnerty and Damien Comer for good measure, wherever they're gonna play, they'll play centrally at some points. It's it's a hell of a skeleton. It it is. It's 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 outstanding. And like they like Galway for me of, I suppose I like I mentioned this a couple of days ago. They've wouldn't necessarily say gone in under the radar, given they were in the All Ireland final last year. But I think they've quietly gone about their business, which means the spotlight hasn't been on them as much. And I think that's definitely going to change this weekend. They've put together some panel of players. The the, the lad who played midfield the last days is John Maher. Mm. What a game! What a game he had. Um, and <clears throat> you've got Peter Cook. You also still have Killian McDay to come back in there, who, for my money, was nearly their best player last year. Certainly, he was outstanding in the quarterfinal and semi final against Armand Derry, and he was very good in the final as well. Obviously, they're going to be missing Kieran Malloy and Liam Silk. They won't be having them back anytime soon, which is another, which will just give you an indication of the strength and depth that they can lose two key players like that and just trot on but I think on the flip side Mayo have plenty as well right down the middle I mean the the Sean Kelly versus Aidan O'Shea is going to be worth the entrance fee alone and then at the other end you have a novice in full back who probably will be given the the task of maybe picking up Comer if Comer is fully fit you'd imagine given the fact that he came on the last day will they hold him back again just in terms of minding him or will they throw him in from the start that will be a key question who picks up Shane Walsh you know, does does Kevin start then the Hessian? We didn't see him the last day. Potentially one of the best players for them during the league. You know, maybe the moment of the league in his goal, um, that little dummy. Was that against Tyrone? It was, wasn't it, Peter? Yeah. I think it was. Yeah. So um I look, I just think there's loads of intrigue. There's the there's as I said, the traditional rivalry. Hopefully a massive crowd because you're looking at two counties with huge expat communities based in Dublin as well. And um, it should be a really good day out. I'm going in. I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> I love your description of Mayo and Galway people who live in Dublin as expats. But well, sure, I'm an expat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Peter, how do you or see a, this one and going? You can call then? us blow-ins as well. Yeah, yeah. How do you see this one going, Peter? Who do you, who do you think is going to win? Uh, so, uh, very similar to, to the league. I think there's going to be a kick off the ball between the two sides at the very That's end. Uh, um, I wouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't yeah. be one w- w- Wouldn't both managers love that, Peter? Uh, that's the last thing they want. Um, See an own point being yeah. scored before there's extra time. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> the fact, the fact, I know Mayo have a few injuries, and the fact that the championship's coming up the week after probably 
give the nod to to Galway. Um, and as I say, their game management and with Comer coming back in now, they can vary their play that wee bit more. I think Shane Walsh will be fine his feet. He's getting better with every game he plays. They just may have uh, a few more options than than Mayo. I don't think Kevin's going to risk anybody that he might want for the championship the following the week. So, um, has a nod to to Galway possibly after extra time. Okay, I'm going to say Galway. Niall, how about you? Mayo, Mayo, just a completed job. Okay, and Rory. Yeah, I think Mayo are a team built. Football is played differently in Croke Park. Uh, the pace, the way the ball bounces, the acoustics, your experience. And I just think when you add all of that up, a hesitant nod to Mayo in the first of potentially three massive games between them for the rest of the summer. Oh. That would be nice, wouldn't it? Jesus, mm. that would, uh, that, that, you know, you give out a bit of structure, Roy, but that, that wouldn't be too bad. Um, Fantastic. <laughs> okay, in the curtain raiser then, as we're now obliged to call it, just because Dublin are involved and it's, you know, they're not home ground. Uh, Niall, Derry and Dublin. Derry, speaking about rope it up, <laughs> Derry did kind of rope it up Dublin in this first game here. Um Dublin have, you know, a very experienced manager in Desi Farrell and some very, very experienced, very clever footballers. I suppose the question is, how much did they learn for that first outing and how much do they want to give away in a Division 2 final? Yeah, I don't really know what's going to happen in this match. What I do think will happen is that Stephen Cluxon might get a start. Um, I just don't understand why he wouldn't be, why he'd be brought back if he's not going to play him. So... I think this is the perfect game to play him heading into the Leinster Championship. Um, I don't know, that might be a bit uh, ambitious, but it would add a bit of interest. But if he is going to play, we won't be told about it until he lines up in the goal. I no, know no, that much. We'll, we'll probably not know until the first shot. Um, <laughs> I don't know. This one is just piggly piggly. I, I really don't know what to expect in this match. I don't know what either manager wants out of this match, how much importance they're putting on this contest. I know this isn't particularly good for an analysis podcast, but I don't know where the three words. Uh, trying to analyze the Division Two League final is a yeah. tricky one. The job is done. They've got promotion. Yeah, you know, do like Rory. Do Dublin? Do Dublin need that Division Two trophy on uh, on the mantelpiece in Parnell uh, Park? I, I think they don't need it as much as they want Derry's scalp on the wall. I think they feel that they probably let themselves down in that second half. Um, some very poor option taking, which was well highlighted in the aftermath. I feel I would get a sense that they feel that they're a better side than Derry. I, and I think the thing for Derry, the thing with Derry for me is, uh, this is the question I'm only going to find out over the next couple of weeks. Are like, what's the glass ceiling for Derry? What's the peak? What is peak Derry? Have we seen it yet? There's a very strong argument given the way he's picked his teams. Like if you go back, I was looking back at it there earlier on. Derry have only lost two matches since the McKenna Cup of yeah. 2022. And that were both to Galway, by the way, once in the round robin of the league and obviously last year in the semi-final of the All-Ireland. So they have been, in my view, four sheets to the wind for the best part of 18 months now. And I don't know if that's a sustainable model, given the run of fixtures that they're about to embark upon. So if they were ever going to have it within them to maybe, you know, pull the handbrake up a wee bit, now is the time to do it. Or alternatively, as Kieran McKeever mentioned, maybe, you know, the, the Ulster Championship is. I just don't see it that, in that way. I think Gallagher will go for it. But I think Dublin, I, I, I just find, I, I get a sense with Dublin that they'll want to go in. There'll be a big Dublin crowd there. Um, they're the curtain raiser, which I think will sting a wee bit. And I, I could see Der Dublin really going after Derry on, 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 on Sunday in this first fixture. And while difficult to call as well, yeah, it'll be Dublin for me in that one. That's interesting, Peter, because you know, I like kind of the the thread of all this is the championship is very close. These are league finals, weighing up the provincial versus the you know the benefit of the league final. And while a division two title probably won't mean a heck of a lot to Derry either, who've won a few division one titles in not too distant past, 
Rory's right. That scalp of Dublin, knowing you have have the measure of Dublin twice before the championship starts, would mean an awful lot. And Derry, they got the monkey after back of an Ulster title last year. I don't see that. I I don't see them dismissing the Ulster championship by any means for Mana away in their first game. To me, it seems like this is Rory Gallagher wants to win every game he plays as well. Having two, having a, having two up on Dublin going into the championship would be would be a couple of feathers in the cap, I guess, wouldn't it? Absolutely, there'll be no pulling the handbrake here from mm. from Rory's point of view. That's for sure. Mm. Back to the, the point we made at the very start of the program: winning a national title in in Croke Park is important. And again, Derry will not look to turn their nose at that either. So that coupled with the fact that it is Dublin, and they'll want to get one over in in Dublin and. From a Dublin point of view, uh, I agree with Rory. They will certainly want to show these dairy boys that they can beat them up in Celtic Park, but they're not coming down to, to Croke Park to walk all over them. So from that point of view, more so getting the better of this dairy team and putting them in their box rather than yeah. winning a Division 2 title, I think is their so, mo- yeah. motivating factor. So um, to me, a lot will come down. The game the game could well be decided by, by the bench, by which bench is the stronger. Now, up in Celtic Park, Derry give Dublin a five-point lead. And we thought that Derry don't have, the you know, a strong, you know, they've only got carry a small number in their in their panel. It was their bench that, that made the difference in the second half. Gareth McKinless came off and came on and at the start of the second half. was superb. He, he played the way a proper leader would from, from centre-half back. Oshin McWilliams got a, an important score and so did Lachlan Murray. So... Uh, this time round, I expect it, it'll be close enough going into the last 10 or f- 15 minutes. If uh, Dublin, if McCaffrey's fit and you know Paul Mannion is able to come off the, the bench, that just may sw- swing it in, in Dublin's favour. But um, to me, I, I think Derry, if Derry go at them, they will have witnessed that the Dublin defence was leaky. Even though they only conceded one goal against Louth, they could have conceded three or four I think that will be something that Derry will try and exploit. I think they'll go for goals. Um, and I wouldn't be surprised if if they have the legs on, on Dublin at this stage of the year. Back to Niall's very first point about Stephen Cluxton playing. Um, what reason would Desi have for dropping David O'Hanna? None. At the minute? I, I thought he was excellent in, in Celtic Park and the bits and pieces that I've seen of him throughout the year he is one for the future if not one for the current and I would say that would be a serious gamble for for Desi to make he doesn't um, need to make it though Peter no that's my point uh, yeah no he that's doesn't point. but, what, but why Stephen back in then he's not bringing him in just to be an influence in the change room he, he, I agree and even the save against uh, was a hurley down in Parky Key mm. was uh, the fingertips and that save was brilliant Fair. so he's done everything you'd want to do to keep her but why is Stephen Cluxton back in the panel mm-hmm. if he's not because, planning? Because he's Stephen Cluxton. I know, but, but but why 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 would you bring him in if you're? He hasn't, like, even, he hasn't even played with his club for two years. You know, he's like he's he's been playing soccer as far as I'm aware. You he, know, he, so. did he did he play against Mead or something the other night in a challenge? Played against yeah. Mead. Over, that's yeah, that's yeah, a yeah, challenge. Yeah. That's that's nothing. But I just why why like I I just can't see a situation where he's brought in unless listen maybe it's a step to him joining the. The coaching team or something. I don't know. That's I Rory's think, theory. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think that could be something down. Like, yeah. You know, it's down well, the line. Would he not just come in as a coach then if he well, hasn't been playing Gaelic? Is that yeah. is that Desi Farrell's priority at the minute is to worry Andrew. about the, f- yeah. the future of the Dublin management and the backroom team? <laughs> I don't think I don't think so. And and I would guess Niall, yes, he's there to see if he's good enough. Number one, but it's just the influence that he would have and. The expertise that he can lend to young O'Hanlon, Comerford is definitely going to come back. Yeah. So it, it just means it's going to be a very competitive situation for for goalkeeper and his presence alone and and in keeping everybody else on track. And um, maybe it's the the, the spurt. It's it's something that that Dublin require. It could be this that gives him the edge to go on to to win the All Ireland this year. Mm-hmm. So I I think he's more to gain from it than he has than he has to lose. Yeah, and, and given their fixtures as well, Mikey, looking at the way things are shaping up in Leinster, and the fact that like they probably don't really need to be worried about 
seriously competitive football this is the last big test that they're going yeah, to it's, really it's been get. A, it's been a real albatross around their neck for the last 15 years or so yes, but it's an ideal but it's but it's an ideal game for desi in loads of ways you know he's gonna he's gonna go in there he's, he's gonna get a proper there'll be a bit of a championship feel to it and yeah um i just that's why i just think that they'll do get get the job done on sunday i, I think that's a good point rory you know you go in and crow park dublin fans you know they've they usually see a team, it's very rare to come up against a team that's got the better of them in recent history. So I do think there'll be a bit of a spark in the Dublin crowd where I don't expect Derry really to travel in particularly big numbers this weekend. So I uh, listen, I, I think that's sort of <clears throat> a closing atmosphere that can become when the Hill gets a bit of voice, I think might just prove it. But again, as you say there, Derry, 11 games this year, haven't lost, uh, down, beat down in penalties, drew at Cork, got the week off before that Cork match. So maybe that was their break. Now Gallagher's told them, as your break, lads, it's full steam from here. So hopefully, yeah. hopefully, I'd love to see them both go at it. Yeah, I, I don't think Desi will disrespect Wexford and Leash, the winner of which he's going to have to play in the Leinster quarter final and go the gung ho here. Peter, you surprised? We don't really know what's going on with Jack McCaffrey because you know the Dublin, everyone involved with Dublin takes obviously an Omerta at the start of the year. Um, are you surprised we haven't seen more of him? Because you know he's. He's just he's so bloody good. Even the, even neutrals want to see him playing, and he's like it's been a fairly um, it's been a kind of a damp comeback thus far. Well, the opposition's the only um outfit that wouldn't want to see Jack McCaffrey playing. He's been superb. The glimpses that we've seen of him so far, Mikey, he's you know he hasn't lost any of that pace or zest and energy. Still very much there. So we have to take it that he's injured. That that he's carrying a knock. Otherwise, he certainly needs game time. So if he's anyway fit at all, uh, I would be expecting to see him at some stage on... Um, you never know on, You never know with Dublin, though, Peter. It could be the case with Jack McCaffrey. He came back, got, a, got another taste for it, didn't like the taste, and has decided, forget this for a game of soldiers, and he could be gone again, but you're, you, you won't find that out, right? Like, that'd be like the third secret of Fatima with relation to Dublin, so... <laughs> Yeah, you wouldn't know. All right, Niall, you could, you you didn't you didn't want to analyze it. At least tell us who's going to win. That's the easy part. I think Dublin by three or four. I think Dublin just have a wee bit too much at the end. Power power home the last ten minutes. Uh, Rory? Rory. Yeah, Dublin. I think Dublin will uh, Dublin will want to win and will win. Peter, I'm going to stand up for the Ulster brethren here and say Derry are going to win. How about you? Well, Jack McCaffrey's still injured. He's definitely still injured. Then Is we've, he? We've, we've we've sussed that out. So uh, <laughs> okay, he's not going to come on. Derry by one, Mikey. There we go. All right, there we go. Um, Saturday night, the um, we'll start with the we'll start with the curtain raiser because it's my the county of my residence, Wicklow, taking on Sligo. But Niall, what is more interesting here to a lot of people because it is a Division Four league final. Let's be honest, is it's like lifelong buddies going up against each other on the sideline. Um, there they do seem to be. Tony McAtee and uh, Oshin McConville do seem to be very close friends. And as I think Oshin said in an interview in the Irish Independent this week, that Tony is effectively his boss in Cross because he's the under 12 manager and Tony's in, in charge of <laughs> underage development. So um, it, it, it does add a nice storyline to, you know, the Division 4 final, which is should be more about the two teams involved, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, but listen, it is a good plot line. Um, I think for McCombe, it's particularly impressive in year one, like McIntyre year three with Sligo, you'd be expecting some progress. Um, edged out Leitrim, good finish. I think Oshin to go in this first year and, and get them up, especially as there are so many players in that final round, was was especially uh, impressive. Yeah, yeah. Um, I was working out there, like it's, they're two of five of that O2 squad that are currently managing inter-county teams. Like you have those two, you have Ian O'Rourke now and Donegal this week. Uh, you have Kieran McGinney, obviously Arma, and Paul McCormick is the loud hurling manager. What do you say? What are you? What are you saying, Nile? You saying that there's quite the queue? Should a job closer to home become available? <laughs> I, yeah, listen, you know, this is this is this is an audition this weekend. <laughs> Yeah, and I think Ashley only works with John, so we might even take Tony in if he if he uh, wins. Now, money is and it's uh listen, it's uh, it's it's really interesting to see how the two boys get on. Um, I think when people heard Ashley going into Wicklow, there's a few raised eyebrows about it, but he's backed it up big time. Um, he's backed it up big time, is right. Mm. Um, it's a free hit. It's a free hit. Yeah. Um, I saw Sligo watch him a few times last year. Um, did a very young squad last year, Tony. McIntyre has routed the squad and put in a lot of young boys. I was very impressed with them. They looked like a squad that had all the talent, but a real lack of experience. Um, 
they got that sort of bit on the run last year in the Talchon Cup. Um, backed it up again this year. Good final day win over Leitrim. Um, yeah, so it's it's a good one. That I, I spoke earlier about not particularly liking league finals, but I think when you go down to Fuji and the divisions, I think it's really special for these teams. And we've seen it amazingly against Derry a couple of years ago, but remember Leitrim being there a couple of years ago on the the fanfare that went with that, like, what's that, 2019, I think it was, and it's yep. just, uh, so, yeah, lo- actually looking forward to that match, as, as much as see who comes out, the next RMA manager, who wins, but uh, <laughs> I'm looking forward to that game, it's, it's, they're the sort of matches where I hope both teams just go at it, just go at it, Rory, and they're not too worried about how it goes next in a few yeah, weeks. Well, the I think they will. Yeah, I think- probably, probably will. Peter, are you delighted to see your near neighbours just having so much success in inter-county management? As long as it's not a fat and thrown, I'm I'm happy enough that they, <laughs> they achieve and that they win every match they're involved in. Um, yeah, it, it certainly adds a bit of intrigue to it. They'll certainly want to get the better of, of each other. But I don't think they'll be too worried either way unless one of them gets a real tanking. Mm-hmm. Because if that happens in, in Croke Park, that'll not sit well with them, uh, with either manager, with either group. And the damage it can do, uh, uh, you know, as you're about to embark on a provincial championship. So I, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but that's what they'll be hoping certainly doesn't happen if they win in Crow Park uh, Division Four title. Yes, that's that's the icing on the cake. Um, but as long as they get out of it, um, intact and and everybody intact. But I, I see no reason why it'd be one sided again. The scoring averages for both teams have been very similar. Um. The only thing going into it, I'd say for Wicklow at this stage to be in the final, they had got one point after three games. So for McConville to turn that around and to be sitting now in a, in a league final and a very competitive division with a lot of close games, like Leash, Leash. would have been expecting that they should be sitting here in, in, a, provision, uh, pro, uh, in a National League final and, and likewise with Leitrim. So for, for Wicklow to get there, I think it was against the odds, they're they're the team with all the momentum at the minute, so it should be at, at again at, like the previous two games. It should go down to the wire. Yeah, yeah. it's just is to want more for Sligo for the very fact that they are now on the back of last week probably favourites to reach a conic final out of that uh, side of the draw and ultimately play in the All Ireland Championship rather than the Talton Cup. Is that come in the? Do you think if they're losing the Wicklow in a league final, does that? Impact and going in the corner because it's it's New York, Leitrim, and uh, London on their Mayor, side Mayor. of the draw. So if you were picking a team now, you probably would give Sligo the nod. So Sligo is going to be really interesting a team to watch from here on in because their season championship season could diverge in two very different paths. It could, um, and you would say, Rory, if they were to lose to London or Leitrim or New York. There's a good chance they'd end up in Crow Park again, mm-hmm. and this match would be another good bit of experience for them. If they beat London and the winners of New York and Leitrim, they, they won't be seeing Crow Park again. This year, unless maybe the round robin stage, there could be a game in Crow Park. You don't know, but you, we were saying it here last week for Leitrim, for for Leitrim, Sligo or London, New York. The you know Sam Maguire is a dubious prize this year. You think? Sure, it's egg. I definitely think it's a. Uh... Yeah, like if you're trying to build a panel, build a team, build confidence and try and work your way up and then you all of a sudden you're thrown into a sh- into a shark pool and you suffer a couple of heavy beatings at the hands of a Kerry or whoever it might be. Well, it'll probably be Kerry, let's be honest. Um, that could stunt the development and maybe knock a team back. I think Sligo are definitely on the right path. I actually, of the four, this would be the one I'd be reasonably confident and I do think they're a little bit ahead of Wicklow in terms of their development I think Pat Spillane to be fair to him has been a massive addition 210 from play it's incredible it's really good scoring across across the league campaign he's got a really good engine Carabine I think is playing some really good football I think they won an under 20 Connacht title not so long ago their school were in a Hogan Cup final which shows that there's a school down there in um in Sligo. Is it just what's it called? Is it Summer, uh, Hill. Summer Hill? Yeah, mm-hmm. we're in the Hogan Cup final recently against Oma. Now, obviously, that didn't go well on the day, but again, just even make it there shows that look, there's good players coming again, and I think he's done a really good job overall. Tony McEntee, I just I think they've maybe fitness levels, 
top class. I think they won comfortably enough when they met each other in the league. Was it 16-12 or 18-12? Mm-hmm. And yeah, strong fancy for Sligo in this one. But I think I think Peter's spot on. I think it's very, very important to remember. I mean, like nobody would have given Wicklow a prayer of getting promoted and certainly no one was giving them a chance after they had such a, you know, a nervy start to the campaign. So it's some, it's some going for Oshima McConville. And I heard him, I think he was on with Tommy Niblock there on the BBC make point that look it's a free shot as Niall mentioned but also as soon as it's over I think their focus is going to be largely the Talchin Cup after that now that's just and he and he was quite blatant blunt and upfront about that I mean they will they'll they'll fulfill fixtures but I think in terms of trying to develop the panel and I think that's the beauty of the Talchin Cup in a lot of ways and that'll give teams like Wicklow Sligo again well, when you're playing matches. Dublin in a provincial semi-final you're, you're 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 not being coy and you're not being cute you're just that's it, being like, I mean, realistic, you're being realistic you? being realistic and 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 if Dublin beat Wexford yeah so I think I think to but but also to have a tangible goal to aim for after the league is over I think is an important thing because it'll keep players together it'll hopefully offset as we mentioned, I don't know, were we talking off air or on air about the the um, the the exodus of players that across the GA are experiencing now every summer? And I think in terms of J ones in America, so all of those things I think are positives from Ushin's point of view. And I think yeah, it's a free shot. He goes in there; they will be underdogs. But you would have to say Sligo in terms of their development and where they're at should should be winning this game. I as a proud member of. Arrow Greystones, I'm gonna stump for a Wicklow win here. I take it you're all going for Sligo wins, are you? I might, I might go Wicklow. I think Mark Jackson coming back from Sigerson duty and the goals and kicking those mm. three or four points of, from freeze every game has converted losses into wins. And I think it's no surprise that the their results picked up when he came back into the team and these mm. fine margins. So I, I'll go Wicklow too. Why not? Oh boy. Peter. The, the pressures on on Sligo, the point that Niall made, they they need to be winning this game go, going into the the Connacht Championship, you know, with a good chance of getting to the Connacht final, and they they should be the team that should be playing in the in the round robin for the Sam Maguire. So the pressures on them to deliver, I think they will. Um, I think they've got more up front to hurt Wicklow, and I would expect Sligo to win with a couple of points to spare. Okay, um. Now we have a classic of the of, of the league final genre then in division in the division three final. Two teams who played each other last week get to play each other again. Um Fermanagh obviously going all out for a win last week. Gavin probably not quite at the same fever pitch. And will they will they get to that fever pitch now for division three final? It's 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 interesting. Gavin's Route down out of the divisions was interesting. <laughs> down through the divisions is interesting, and their their route back up is interesting again. But I guess we might start with Fermanagh, seeing as we have a former Fermanagh manager with us. Um, Peter, the the job Kieran Donnelly doing is is pretty impressive. I think I don't think many people had them down for promotion this year. And Kieran was with me when I was in in charge of Fermanagh, so he knows his football inside out, and he knows his Fermanagh team inside out. And absolutely, a wee bit like Wicklow, when you were looking at the divisions at the start of the year, I didn't hear too many predicting that Fermanagh would, would make it out. So they have only what one defeat in, in their seven games. And a lot of those games, they were maybe a point, a point in it or a point They dug it out, it. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Every one of them really yeah. they had to dig deep. So um, how can you write them off? What, what he has now... Is there's a good blend of, of youth and experience in this from on side. He has given a number of young lads the, their chance and they're fit, they're athletic. Josh Largo Ellis, Alton Kelm has been sens- sens- sensational for them up front. Um, talk about blistering speed and being direct and hurting opposition. He has it and he, he's brought a completely different element to, to their style of play. And then you have the uh, Ryan Jones is still very dominant around the middle of the pitch. The Cullen brothers are now experienced campaigners. They know what they're about. They're physical and they bring a real edge to the game. So there's a nice balance to to their game. They're trying to, to attack more than they have maybe in, in, in recent years. And it's, it's paying dividends for them. So to, to get to the stage, they're in bonus territory. And I think they'll give a good account of themselves in Croke Park. It's, you know, it's not unfair to say that in GA terms, 
Peter, for a number of reasons, demographic and geographic. <laughs> they don't have a big pick in Fermanagh. They are one of the minnows of kind of uh, of the G GA counties. And they definitely punch above their weight. Um, could you give us any insight into why you think that is after your, your time there? Yeah, because there's a lot of passionate Gales and, and Fermanagh, um, despite what you say about the numbers. And some of the lads made a point earlier about a lot of progress being made and and Slego, there's serious development work going on in Fermanagh at the minute. And that would give you an indication that they're a county that's, that's heading the right way and they want to head the right way. They have a fundraising draw on at the minute. I hope you men have all bought your ticket for it. £100 a ticket for Club Bernia with a view of upgrading the facilities up at Lisson. Now, the facilities aren't bad there, but they want they want first class facilities and they're going to do it. Club Ernia are vibrant at the minute. They're taking on a lot of money for such a small county as well. They are ahead of a lot of so-called bigger counties in, in, in terms of their ambitions and, and going about actually doing it. So behind the scenes, they have a lot of good people in the right places. And you're beginning to see the fruits of that now on the field of play. And the fact that there are a smaller county as such, they all know each other very well. They're a tighter unit. And um, I'm pleased that, that Kieran Donnelly's um, getting the best out of them at the minute. Yeah, one of the reasons he's getting the best out of them, Niall, is some clever recruitment in his own coaching team. He brought in Ronan O'Neill as the um, forwards coach and looking at the looking at the totals they're racking up and the fact that they're able to kick scores under pressure in injury time repeatedly to, to get something out of these matches and the fact that we're not constantly talking about Sean Quigley anymore shows he's he's having an impact. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, he's, he's younger than a few boys. He's younger than Sean. He's younger than Declan McCusker and a few boys. So it's <laughs> always, I always find an interesting dynamic, dynamic when you see a coach that's younger than some of the players and how he gets on. But broad speaking, very highly of him. Um, as Peter says there, Kieran, he knows very well. And Kieran obviously managed a bit in Cavan as well. And he's just a, he's a really good guy, but he's obviously very easy to work with. Dutter, Dutter. You know, he mentioned Ulton Calendar, Peter, and Ulton, for me, has probably been one of the players of the entire league mm -hmm. across all the divisions. And so thank, thank God he hasn't went to Australia for the Fermanagh fans. Like, it looked like he was maybe going to the Aussie rules. But I think Dar McGurn up front's given him a good focal point as well. Um, he's a big lad, like Dar, big, big lad, very, very strong, very physical. And it's sort of, it's taken a bit of the pressure off Quigley there as well. Um, in terms of being the that inside forward that's you know you're relying on for the scores, it's allowed Sean to come in and just slap home a few last minute winners and different things like that. But all of a sudden, they seem to have uh, a lot of options. And I've seen that team that won the Hogan Cup four years ago. Now I've seen them, yeah, four years ago. I've seen them a few times at McCrory level that year, and they were an excellent, excellent McCrory team. Really, really strong, and they must have brought in four or five of those. Uh, Largo Ellis, Flanagan, Sean McNally and Nets, uh, Horn, the midfielder. So that seems to have given them a real injection. And people see it, you know, do school teams in a in a county like Fermanagh where the numbers are, where they are always going, going to be scrapping in the numbers game. Winning a Hogan Cup is just vital. Getting a team like that, that they can pluck five or six players from. And Big they're just, uh, Peter alluded to it there, they're trying a bit, play a bit more attacking football. It seems to be working very well. Um. Their one loss was by a point, but then on the other side, they won a couple of games by a point. Their their need was greater against Calvin last week, and that probably showed Calvin McGee just a star performance. And it's all positive. It's all positive. And, and I think with a good young manager, a good coach like Ron O'Neill, there, there's no reason why they can't go up to Division 2 and, and, and really compete up there as well. Mm. Rory, on yeah. the other side, Calvin, they are... Proving themselves under Mickey Grain to be something of a championship specialist team and uh, the league hasn't always gone so well for them. They've done what they needed to do. They've got themselves out of the basement. They're back up to Division 2, which is probably not still not where they think they belong. So uh, to me, this is a this is another team who, like, with how much do they need this and, like, how much focus are they putting on playing against presumably Armagh, winners of Armagh and Antrim, um, in what for them, like they have to be licking their lips, looking at what's happened to our man the last month or so. Yeah, and but I think Kevin would see themselves as, um, I suppose, old money and would feel that they should <laughs> be competing in Sam Maguire. And I think they will probably need to either 
will they have to make an Ulster final or else hope luck falls their way but I don't think that's going to happen given the way the draw has panned yeah. out so they'll probably like unless they can make an Ulster final they they won't make their way into the Sam Maguire so it, I, I, I would I would see them as having you know, and, and bringing a lot to the table if they manage to get up to that level. I think their last experience in Croke Park was a bad one. Obviously, losing the Talchin Cup final last year. Do they need to go back into the Talchin Cup final again in terms of their development and where the team profile is right now? Maybe, maybe not. I think they would, I'd say, ab obviously have ambitions to, for bigger things. But I think the big thing from my point of view, when we this is, I think, in some ways, nearly the hardest game the whole weekend to call because you just don't know. You can't read too much into the game last week. What was the Daniel Day-Lewis uh, uh, movie? There will be blood. The one thing I'm going to be guaranteeing here is there will be goals. There's, <laughs> go there's going to be goals in this match. Um, you've got two. You've got one team that is banging them in for fun and another team that's leaking them a wee bit. So I think there's this This should be a, a lot of fun. And... Um, it would have uh, a lot of neutrals, I think, very intrigued as well. And I think in Nile is also spot on in relation to both teams. Like when they come up into Division 2 next year, Division 2 is going to be very, very interesting. Now, that's a long way off, but it's going to be so competitive. So there's you know, plenty for both of them to play for. But in terms of this weekend, without a doubt, the hardest one to call for me. That, before we go, before I ask you to give us your... Your kind of your predictions. I like Roy's description of Cavan as old money, Peter. And I was wondering, is that something you would have kind of noticed during your career that Cavan would have had this idea of themselves as, you know, having won whatever it was, 50 Ulster titles in a row before the advent of colour television that they maybe had opinions about themselves that I've would, would I ever come across? Tradition's another word for that, maybe. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. They, they certainly, yep. I, I, I couldn't agree more with the, the fact that they don't see themselves as a Talton Cup team. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that long ago they were winning Ulster, and if they were pitted against any side in an Ulster final, they would be expecting to win it. Mm -hmm. So absolutely, they, their target has has got to be to. They're not a Division Three team, no. in, in my book, they're they're beyond that. They've too many quality players. And a lot of those players are now experienced players as well. So they, for that reason, they should be beating this from on a team, this from on a team on their way up. And if both sides have called in thrown expertise for mana from a forward's point of view, because that's the area they needed it most. And Ron O'Neill is certainly a blade in there, a fantastic coach. But likewise, Mickey Graham has called in Ryan McManaman, who knows a, a thing or two about defending. So they, it'll be an interesting battle. No love lost again between the two sides, but on paper, you know, Cavan should should be taking this one, but uh, certainly wouldn't rule out for Mono. That's interesting. It's like that that meme with the two Spider Men pointing at each other. So it's going to be like with the, when this attack for Mana attack goes up, or sorry, this uh, yeah for Mana attack goes up against this Cavan defense. Um, okay, Niall, you you think a Cavan win is it? Yeah, yeah, I think Cavan legend. Just look at Mickey Graham, third longest serving football manager in the game now, um, which speaks more well. about the volume of turnover we've had in, in inter county managers. Um, yeah, and if I was a Mead fan, I'd be very worried about this Cavan team, to be honest with you. Um, depending on how things go in Leinster, they're the one team that they're the team that, as far as I know, they're the team that loses out if Cavan do reach mm -hmm. the final. Aren't, like Cavan aren't going to be scared in Armagh at Breffney Park. I think Armagh, last time I remember when there was a weight in the championship, they're not going to be scared of Armagh. Mm. If they get a good, comprehensive, strong performance this weekend, Dar McVeady being back is massive, playing in a deeper role. Paddy Lynch is looking like he could be a boy who would love playing at Crow Park. I'd be very worried if I was Colin O'Rourke. <laughs> like, like, now, now, that's an interesting question. Like, I'd throw it out there. If it was a straight shootout between Cavan and Meath, who do you think would bring more to a Sam Maguire round robin? Well, if you're asking me who would win, if they're going head to head in the match, I would, I, I would pick Cavan personally. Mm. Um, I think the evidence maybe on the back of what happened last year doesn't suggest that, but I, I, Peter's completely right. There's not one team. With maybe the exception of Tyrone, who always seem to have their number. Yeah, they, even, they can't handle Tyrone at all yeah, for whatever even, reason. Even, even when they do draw a Tyrone, hammer them by 20 points in the yeah. It's a disaster. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, no, I, Calvin, they're physically, they're so strong. They're physically, yeah. they're a bit like Derry for me in their physicality. And 
it didn't go well last year in that they didn't want to be in that competition, but it did allow Mickey to blood a couple of new players. Mm. And they, bl- they blended in really, really well. Lynch is obviously the standout of those boys. Uh, McBeady back, McKiernan's back from injury, come on against Down for the second half. Is uh, he, he doesn't look 100%, but he's still c- clipping over a few scores. But it didn't go to what they wanted last year, but it also, I think, gave them a great opportunity just to bring in a couple of fresh faces and I, I genuinely, as an Armagh fan, I am scared. If we get over Antrim, if we get over Antrim, I'm very scared of going to Bresby Park. He has, he asked him for a Division Three final uh, prediction, and he pours his heart out. He is worried. Uh, <laughs> yeah, he should be. He should be. Rory, who's going to win on yeah, Saturday? Yeah, I think, I think this is. I like it's. It's one of the of the four. It's the one I'm nearly looking forward to most. This and the Division One final. I just, I think it's the hard. They're very, very hard to call. I think. Manor are just one of these perennially underestimated teams and one of these and they perennially overachieve I mean they're up there with Monaghan and Loud maybe to a lesser extent of late in terms of getting the maximum out of themselves and Peter obviously went into great detail in terms of what they're doing but I just I think it will be a, a, a super game and I think it'll be close uh, but I you, you would expect Cavan just that little bit more Croke Park experience. I think that does count for something and that they will just eke it out maybe by two or three points in the end. Oh, you're really morphing into a pundit. All the reasons why Fermanagh will win, Gavin will. No, no <laughs> a good Cavan, 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 Cavan Pete, for me. Cavan Pete, for me. Peter? Yeah, I, I think it'll just be uh, Cavan to, to, to share it. Though it wouldn't surprise me. I know there's a big game in these Fermanagh boys, but... Um, you're on with me there. Am I right in saying that if Clare get to a monster final, that could be to the detriment of Correct. Mead as well? So it's not yeah. just Calvin that the Mead men may, mm. may be worried about. Yeah, and it's not just Mead who need to be worried. Other Kildare might need to be worried as well. Right. Yeah, it's true. It's true. Uh, I'm going to go for Fermana just to be awkward. So that's us done. Um, thank you very much to Niall, to Rory and to Peter. You can follow the matches on RT Radio, um, Saturday and Sunday Sport. And you can also follow them on the RT website and the RT News app. And we'll be back on Monday to uh, see how I got all four predictions right, obviously. So right. And I, and I got them all wrong. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we'll chat to you then. Good luck. Goodbye. Oh, we earned it by winning the last two matches on the road. And that's not going to be taken away from us. But what I love in Hurling, I love players that will never give in. He hits it. He hits it. It's over the bar. 